Well, of course, uh, broadcast show has to come and visit the Atomos stand. Just about every show we go to, it wouldn't be right if we didn't. And uh, we're here today at BV 2013. We've got Jeremy Young with us, CEO of Atomos. Hi, Jeremy. Hi, mate. How are you doing? Very, very good. Now, you always have something, first of all, you always have something interesting in your stand. You've got sushi this time. We've got sushi. This is the Samurai Sushi Bar. And uh, we, we always like to have something interesting to point out, point yep. the cameras at and show our recorders yep. Yep. and uh, show the high quality recording yep. and go into the editing yep. package. And, and this is nice and colorful. We've got um, Kyoko, who's a, a, a professional in this area. Yeah. So she's doing a great job over there. But something interesting for the customers Absolutely. to see, and you get a bit of sushi. It's true, you can't go wrong with that. So, talking about pointing cameras, yes. we've got a lot here. Do you want to talk us through, people don't know about Atomos, and obviously they've been yes. on a different planet, yes. but give us an overview of what you're showing here. And okay, well, there's probably two main things that we do. Yeah. We give better quality from older cameras, yeah. and the newer cameras, we give, we give cinema, more cinema, quality yeah. so that you've got more of an online record, yeah, yeah, if sure. I can say that. Yeah, a yeah. 422 10-bit record yeah. to your editing codec. Okay. And really, it's that you can sit on top of any camera. You know, every camera has a different MPEG format yeah. or bit rate, etc. So even if you've got a 10 megabit camera and it's a handheld, yeah. you can put our device on top. Yeah. If you've got a raw recording device like yeah. a RED, yeah. you can put our device on top yeah. and get a faster yeah. offline workflow. Sure. So what we're showing here is that we've got a DSLR, which is yeah. D800, and this has been exceptionally popular with the Ninja yeah. 2, giving you, obviously, post-production yeah. super high quality. We've got the FS700, which is the, the, the low-end cinema photographer. Yeah. Yeah. The C100, which we've implemented time, time code and start stop flag on there, so really some SDI features creeping into HDMI. And the people who can't afford a C300 who have the lenses for Canon can now get in, into the market for five grand, including a Ninja. Then we've got JVC 35 megabit broadcast camera, so you can upgrade that to be BBC compliant, and it's 100, 220 meg, whichever setting you want to put on there, Avid or, or ProRes. And then we've got the red over there showing the high-end cinema guys using it. So we're just trying to show not too many cameras, because we could put 100 cameras on here, but just showing each market segment and, and the range, and something interesting to look at. So obviously on top of these cameras we've got two products, it's either the Samurai, Ninja 2 or yeah, the Samurai. Correct. So Nin explain the difference between two. All right, Ninja 2 is the HDMI yep. version, so that's for the HDMI only cameras which tend to be five grand or under. Yep. So that's the, the budget, yep. that in that budget range. And then there's the SDI cameras which we, we know can go up to the hundred grand range. Yep. Um, and we, we're either an offline or an online record for yeah. that, and so the Samurai sits on top of that. They all have the same functions. Yeah. The Ninja 2 has a 4.3 inch screen, yeah. smaller form factor, it weighs 350 grams, whereas the Samurai is 380 yeah. grams. And then with batteries, etc., you're, you're around the 600 gram mark for both of them. Gotcha. And probably the main feature is low cost, low running cost. Yeah. And what, why we say that is hard disk. We record to hard disk. We've done thousands of hours of testing on, on hard disk. We support SSDs also. Sure. It's just a SATA 2.5-inch yep. yep. drive for your laptop, etc. But the, the running cost of using hard disk, 750 gig drive is now 70 quid. Yep. And that gives you seven and a half hours yep. of the highest quality recording yep. from the center of the camera. So yep. we're bypassing compression and giving you that ease of workflow, no transcoding, no capture card required. And our customers are loving the extra time they have yeah. to do other things. So somebody buys, say, a Ninja 2, mm -hmm. they've got themselves something like Nikon D800, and they decide, I want to go up to a Canon C300. Oh, hold a second, I, don't wanna, I want to use my HDSTI out on my C300. How are they going to get that into their Ninja 2? I'm glad you asked. Funny that. Yeah, they, we've got a, a, a nice little product called the Connect right. Converter Range, yep. and there we put our dual battery system inside a converter. Right. And so we, we give you, it's an SDI to HDMI converter, which is called the S2H, yep. and then the H2S Connect is, yep. the, is the, the reverse of that. Yep. You can turn your Ninja into a Samurai yep. by putting one on the back. It's got the same battery plate on the bottom of the device yep. to click onto the back of the unit, click, and you then have the, uh, the ability to go SDI into the Ninja and HDMI into the Samurai, and you go the other way, just put another one on there. So they both sit on the back and you yeah. can upgrade. So what most people do is buy either a Ninja or Samurai for their main, if they're an yeah. HDMI customer or an SDI customer, buy one connect, yeah. and then you've got all bases covered. Yeah. And a, a client comes in and says, well, I want to use X camera, yeah. but it's SDI, but I've only got a Ninja. Boom, you're away. Excellent. Sorted. Now, uh, there's one more product. There's one more product, I was going to say. Which is the Ronin. I was going to say, we've got a Ronin over there. I spotted yeah, it. Should we go and have a look at the Ronin? Yeah, let's go, let's go and have a look, look at the Ronin.
We briefly saw this at IBC, so yes. tell us a little bit more about this. Yeah, so uh, it's in production and shipping in the next couple of weeks. Yep. Um, we're just doing the final QA testing, etc. And what we have is basically it's a samurai, yep. but we had a lot of samurai customers, especially using, trying to mount it in a rack environment yep. as a portable mobile recorder because it was a really affordable SDI yep. recording yep. device. And when, when we saw this, we, we said, what are you using it for? And it was coming from switches. Yep. So here's a Sony switcher um, for live production, yep. you know, events, churches, universities, yep. all, the, all those wonderful um, inf big infrastructure. Yep. Yep. And they need to record high quality from their final feed. Yep. And that's what the Ronin is designed for. It's a bit more robust. It's got a handle on top. Yep. You can put two inside a rack and do dual recording. So you can just keep continuously yep. record. It's got nice little feet to pop it up if you're just sitting it on, on a table like yeah. this, which is what a lot of the customers yeah. do. Just gives it that form factor for, for the, uh, that type of yeah, customer. Sure. We also have added AC power. Right. So now you don't need to keep swatching, swapping sure. the batteries out or have a cable coming out yeah. like, like we have in, um, on the Ninja and Samurai. Yeah. So th they can be AC powered too, but this is internal AC. And we've also put XLR audios in, in and out. Uh, and phantom power, etc. So that, and on the front, we've got toggle switches for the uh, audio feed, so that people yep. they can mute it, they can check it, and then they can leave it to record. And it all has all the same functions yep. as the Ninja and, and the Samurai, with a nice, smooth little um, in and out yep. button there to make sure that it's uh, easy to use for people. And all your uh, units now record to ProRes and Avid DNX. They do, they do. So we record to 220. Uh, yep. X, which is their 10 bit, AVID's 10 bit yep. version. Um, that's equivalent to ProRes HQ. Yep. Then there's uh, 220, which is the 8 bit version, which a lot of broadcasters yep. use because yep. um, they're, they're just recording, uh, they're not doing much post with it, just cutting and yep. sending it out. There's 145, which is just a little bit less bit rate. Yep. For a lot of the older AVIDs use the 145, yep. so that was good to, to get those customers involved. And then we've got the 45, which is often the offline yep. edit choice of yep. choice for the cinema guys because it, they're conforming to raw files but they need a quick edit so that's what the avid gives you excellent jeremy now if people want to find out information about this what's the website they can go to atomos.com a-t-o-m-o-s.com it's the original greek word for atom it means indivisible and that's what we see our customers we're combined together to make some uh, amazing new new workflows in the video industry Jeremy, brilliant. So they can go there, find out information about this. They can also find out about, because you do a lot of the little ancillary devices like the power connectors and things we like do. that as well now, we don't do. you? So they we can do. be found on there as well. Exactly. And they okay. can all those accessories and the products are available through a pretty um, extensive worldwide yeah. channel. Yeah. And uh, here in the UK, uh, we've got something like 55 dealers yeah. that are they're selling us. And uh, from pro AV, event dealers, yeah. all the way through broadcast and, of course, videographer. Jeremy, thank you very much. Um, go and have a look at their website. We use Atomos Kit all the time and think they're great. And don't forget all the videos that we're doing here at Broadcast Show on our website, actually not at Broadcast Show, all the videos that we're doing here at BVE are on our website, which is broadcastshow.com.